good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. I hope the time change didn't make mess y'all up. Uh, I woke up an hour early. Just, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that's good stuff. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. Oh, I tell you, I hurt all over. My wife and I worked in the garage yesterday, and uh, we had people stop and think we're having a yard sale. But anyway, all right. Well, as always on Sunday morning, there's a lot of readings. Uh, love it, love it. We're going to start off with a reading in Ruth, and then we're going to Psalm 127, and then we're going back to 1 Kings, and then Psalm 146. And then a reading in Hebrews, and then we're going to the Gospel of Mark. So let's get started. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> Ruth chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and then chapter 4, 13 through 17. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. So here we go. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you, so that it may be well with you. Now here is our kinsman Boaz, with whose, uh, with whose young women have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now wash and anoint yourself, and put on your best clothes, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. And she said to her, All that you tell me I will do. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became... Okay, now we're skipping to chapter 4. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when they came together, the Lord made her to conceive, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him the name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. And he became the father of Jesse, the father of David. And there you go. And there's the connection to Christ. All right. Uh, next, Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it in, in labor, build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb of, of a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. <clears throat> All right. Get a little bit of starter fluid here. Oh. Next, we're going to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. So here we go. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and pre prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, 
Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it, and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of God, of, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. All right. Next, we're going to Psalm 146, and here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations, praise the Lord. All right. Get a little coffee here. All right. Next, we're going to the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 through 28. So here we go. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. And that's going to be a glorious day. Amen. All right. Uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. And here we go. As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes, who like to walk along in long robes, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury, and watched the crowd putting the money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came, and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. And this is the word of the Lord. And as always on Sundays, the Revised Common Lectionary has some prayers, and I would like to uh, share a couple of those. So let us pray. Providing God, you journeyed with Ruth and comforted Hannah uh, when their lives were burdened by grief. Grant us faith to believe you will provide a future where we see none, that bitterness may turn to joy and barrenness may bear life. Amen. And then finally, God of widows and strangers, you protect the oppressed and forgotten and feed the hungry with good things. You stand among us in Christ, offering life to all. Give us open hearts and minds to respond with love to the world. 
caring for those for whom you care. Amen. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this Sunday morning. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I hope you all have an awesome day. So with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. We'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee in the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.